Yeah. Well, hello. Well, hello. <laughs> so nice Great to meet, to meet you. you. Yeah. Great to meet you. Yeah. Great to see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been a while, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 21 years, maybe. <laughs> 25 almost. 25 years. Yeah. All right, all right, yeah. You want to go inside and see the Absolutely. Office? Okay. Absolutely. This is Rojo. A little gelding, and that's Jin. Uh-huh. Um, we lost a horse last winter, but these are both very rideable horses. Did you tough, ever, have tough a, winter. ever have a Toby? Yes, yes, yes. A Toby and all of the dog, all of Joe Pickett's dogs have been my real dogs. Oh, wow. Daisy. Yeah. We lost Daisy a couple months ago. Oh, no. We have a new one named Pearl. Oh, new... gosh. And what was the early, Mac Maxine? Maxine. Yeah. That, was, yeah. that was our first black Labrador. Oh. So I do all my work here. I mean, I didn't used to. The first, mm -hmm. um, I think, probably 15 books, 15 years, mm -hmm. we had a house in Cheyenne. Uh -huh. And I used to do a lot of work even before that, like on the road. Um, and I had a little home office in Cheyenne, but when we built this place, we built it with an office on top, uh -huh. which is nice. Oh my gosh. Come on in. Oh my gosh. How great is this? And look what you're looking at. When Although, the l dirty little secret here, I learned this when we used to have a cabin and I would look out the, uh, the window of the cabin, I could see the river, I yeah. could see when fish were rising and I would <laughs> get too distracted. So when we built it, I made sure the windows were high enough that when I'm sitting down, I can't see anything. So yeah, this is where I kind of have my, the, the inventory of all the books are here, here and in Cheyenne. So a lot of like, um, your earlier ones, the audio ones, are all over in Cheyenne. The most recent ones are here. Leon Bottom was a little cool at first when Sheridan arrived, but his new well, I have the tapes and uh, back home, and, uh, though I don't listen to them. Well, you don't? <laughs> no. <laughs> Troy was asking me about that, and you know, it's like the actor thing of uh, you never sound like what you think you sound like and you never look like what you hope you'll look like so you know all right well i know in my case very i think probably similar after i after the book after four three or four versions of copy editing mm -hmm. seeing that thing over and over and over i never reread it yeah um only recently last year did i reread the first book open season because of the TV show. I wanted to see how close they were. Right. And all I could see were things I should have done better. Huh. You know, and, and I wish I wouldn't have put that in and that kind of stuff. So I, I don't reread them because they're ingrained. Right. Um, but luckily, and then you probably have a unique perspective on this, all three of my daughters and my wife get the first drafts, get the manuscripts. Yeah. Cause so when they get, when they see the next one, they'll say, no, Dad. That thing is on, you know, taxidermy shops on Main Street, not right, First Street. Right, right, or, right. Or um, how many gunmetal skies can there really be? You know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So they helped me out with that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great that they bring that perspective. I mean, do you have, like, a, a sort of picket land book that you can refer to? The and publisher say? is in the process of building what they call a series Bible. A Bible. That's right a now. Bible. But there's been a guy um, in Colorado, an ex-engineer, who on his own, for no compensation, I didn't ask him to do this, mm -hmm. has kept track of every single character name since the first book. And every year he updates it. Look at that. Oh, that's oh fantastic. That's invaluable. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> my editor could not believe it. I have a new editor, and she says, we're building this Bible. I said, well, did I ever tell you about this thing? And I sent it to her, and he couldn't believe it. Oh, my gosh. That's incredible. And it's every and then his characters carries them across which book, what page. Oh. And he just does it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. In fact he just sent me an email, he updated it with the new book now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Which is really kick ass. I'm really enjoying it. Good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I should have called it Chomp Chomp Chomp. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> what is it called and what's it about? Three inch teeth. And it's about a rogue grizzly bear killing people. 
um, attacking and killing people around different places in Wyoming. And, um, but a bad guy who's introduced many books ago um, gets out of prison and realizes this is his entree into going after his list of his revenge list. So he, he figures out a way to go after people and make it look like a grizzly bear. So Joe Pickett doesn't know which victims are real grizzly bear attacks and which ones are the bad guys' attacks. And he enlists the aid of another bad guy. It's yeah. also a couple of books back. And uh, so, you know, it's, I, was just, I was telling Troy that I had to actually download uh, that one to get what Alex Soledad sounds oh, I like bet. again. Because, you know, I have the same issues. Like, oh my gosh, you know, Chuck Coon, what did he sound like when he was, you know, was he the one with a, you know, yeah. who, who's got, and, and how many times am I going to use the gravelly voice? Yeah. And, you know. When I meet readers all over the, uh, you know, all over the country, uh, I, I'm surprised how many are listening to the books, not reading the books, yeah. and how much they enjoy you. Wow. And they do. I've never, ever, no one's ever said that guy. Where'd you find that guy? Wow. Um, and, I, and what I've always said up till now is, well, I've never met him. Yeah. So this is wow. a s special deal. There you go. There you go. Where have you been all my life? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a this is a terrific space to work in. It is. Space. I love. There's lots of. I, I realized today I, I came out and turned the heat up. I thought, God, there's a lot of guns. Is this out that here. rare set of uh, Game Warden? It is. In like 1963. Um, all I don't know who did this, but somebody, maybe the manufacturer, offered all of the game wardens in Wyoming, you can buy this set of guns, and we'll put your badge number on it and your name on every one of them, and I don't know how many game wardens, I think there was probably like 30 at that time, and I don't know how many actually did it, but one of them who did became the director of the Game and Fish Department, and then his sons contacted me from Cotton. Uh, California and said, we found dad's collection in his basement and he's never opened them up. We're fans. Would you like them? Of course, you know. Um, so each one has the Game and Fish logo and his badge number and um, in some cases his name. And my neighbor down the road built a shadow box for him. The 357 Magnum. Wow. Which in the first book, that's what Joe has because at that time, that's what they carried. Later on, um, they started carrying Glocks, right. like all else right. in law enforcement. Right. And as we all know, he's not good. He's, not a, good. he's not a good shot. <laughs> I love that. I love that. One of the things that I think you just really capture so fantastically, and again, I was saying because I come from the East, but we've owned in Utah since 85 and so forth. Long time. And, uh, my... my uh, a uh, honeymoon was a uh, backpacking trip in the Abajo Mountains with, you know, my dear wife and so forth and so on. And I just, you know, went, wow, this is, I love this. And I do, I love the West. And um, you capture so fantastically the uh, red and tooth and claw aspect, the hostile, hostile element the rugged element, the terrifying element of nature, but also underneath that is this incredible love and respect and acknowledgement of this land, of the weather, of the sky. And um, right from the first book, that just, you know, I got that immediately. The element of nature and the land and the sky is just, it's really extraordinary. Well, thanks. It's really yeah. extraordinary. And I think um, I've mentioned in the books, and I think you probably know, I use three Wyoming towns kind of as my idea of saddle strength. Right. Primarily Saratoga here, right. where we live, because right. the rivers and everything else. But um, also a town called Story, Wyoming, and Sheridan. Yeah. It was elements of each. Yeah. But like you mentioned, Savage Run. Savage Run is about 30 miles south of here. Mm -hmm. Savage Run Wilderness Area. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the fire was many years later. And mm -hmm. the canyon. Mm -hmm. But um, the canyon I had in mind in the book is actually by Dubois, Wyoming, which is, well, northwestern. Right. Where a place where I elk hunted once and saw 
an actual place where there was an Indian crossing, just like mm -hmm. described in the book. Yeah. So I throw stuff in. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's all based on real locations, but that's not necessarily geographically correct unless I'm talking about a specific town. When you did the third book and Nate Romanowski mm -hmm. was introduced, mm -hmm. you didn't know and I didn't know that 22 years later, Nate Romanowski would still be in the books. Right. So um, do you ever do a character where you think, ooh, I wish I would have done him or her differently back then because now I'm locked into it? Yeah, I don't think I do. Um, Listeners would say you're extremely consistent Well, because that, that's what I hear from them. I'm glad to hear that. Um, you know, I... Uh, I'm happy that I hit upon the thing for Nate that I did uh, amongst my friends who do listen uh, to to the recordings and so forth and so on. The yeah, I mean, the Nate Romanowski character is just you know bigger than life. Mm -hmm. and everybody's just always saying you still got your ears and so forth and so on <laughs> and, and the whole deal and so. Um, yeah, no, uh, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. I would like to say, though, in terms of characters, uh, Mary Beth, I just think is Mary Beth and the daughters. And I bet you're writing very much from your heart and from your family because her intuitive skills as a sleuth, as a database uh, aggregator mm -hmm. and interpreter, you know, uh, I refer to my wife as the brains of the outfit. Me too. Um, and she is. It's not like Joe's, you know, the dullest knife in the drawer. It's not. But she's got this fabulous ability to take what she's getting from him, go to the library, hit on the mm -hmm. computer, and she has the same moral compass that he has mm -hmm. also. Again, which is one of the things that's so fabulous about the books. And then the kids, I mean, Sheridan, April, Lucy, they're all distinct. They're all commendable and interesting. Even April, who's a, you know, pain in the butt much of the time <laughs> and so forth. But, you know, I can't remember which one it is, but uh, when she says to him, you got to stop getting shot. Yeah. And he's in the, in the <laughs> hospital, mm -hmm. you know, and she goes right to the, to the pith of it, you know, and, uh, <laughs> So I, I forgot about you that. know, Mary Beth is just really, it's a great, it's a great creation. And the, there you go. You're my man. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, my pleasure. I appreciate it. And they're just, you know, they're parts of every book that just stay with you.